chapter 4, verses 32 through 35. Hear these words. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one claimed private ownership of any possessions. But everything they owned, they held in common. With great power, the apostles gave their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them. For as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold, they laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Here is the reading of Holy Scripture. Today we are beginning our stewardship campaign, and the theme for our, this stewardship campaign is rooted in love. I would like for us to begin to, by thinking about what, what is stewardship, what are we talking about when we talk about stewardship. I know that there probably are some of you here that dread this time of year. Here we go again, the pastor is going to guilt and shame us all into giving more money to the church. When we do talk about money in the church, it tends to be very basic, like we are part of this church and we need to pay the bills to keep the lights on. So please consider raising your pledge. This way of talking about money not only stresses our basic survival needs as an institution and is not likely to inspire very many individuals to want to contribute to a church, let alone any nonprofit. Stewardship is about more than just being able to meet our budget needs. Wikipedia defines stewardship in this way. Stewardship is an ethic that embodies the responsible planning and management of resources. The concepts of stewardship can be applied to the environment and nature, economics, health, property, information, theology, cultural resources, etc. How we use money can say a lot about us as individuals and as a church. How our financial resources are used says a lot about where our values lie and what our commitments are about. Jesus in the Gospels talks more about money than any other topic in the New Testament. Recently, I was a part of a minister's first meeting with a minister's alliance around writing. We shared what all we were working on for the upcoming Sunday. And I shared with them, well, I'm working on stewardship. And they said, I'm sorry. There's a lot of things that I can get really excited about, like grace, forgiveness, reconciliation. Stewardship, it's a little bit hard to, to get people excited about that. But I'm hoping today that we can really look, see the importance of stewardship and give it a resurrection. In the book of Acts, how a disciple uses money is a determining factor to whether or not you are a committed follower of Jesus or you are a hypocrite. I said money there, but it's really broader than that. It's all your resources that you're able to give. I'm sure we've all heard the saying, put your money where your mouth is. Yeah. The importance of stewardship in Christian belief and practice begins in the book of Genesis. God creates the earth, and God gives the humans the authority to take care of the earth. The early Israelites of the Old Testament believed that God was the creator of everything, and that they should give back to God a portion of their earthly resources as a way of giving thanks to God for what God had given them. This is the idea behind some of the burnt offerings or animal sacrifices that we hear about in the Old Testament or the Hebrew Scriptures. They were giving thanks to God. They were called offerings, a 
of thanksgiving. This idea carried over into Christianity that none of us really owns anything. Everything that we have is a gift from God. And we should give thanks to God by giving back to God some of our earthly resources. The psalmist puts it this way. Everything belongs to God, the earth and everything within it. So Christians have this strange and odd concept that none of us are the true owners of anything, that everything belongs to God, and we give back a portion of what God has blessed us with back to God. Think of how strange this idea is to the enlightened, independent, secular Westerner who believes in accomplishment, achievement, and keeping what they have earned. It's my money. I earned it because of my own hard work, and I can use it however I want to. Think about the oddness of my position as a minister. And I was corrected during our Zoom Bible study that it's not just me that has this kind of oddity to my career, but teachers do this as well. It is a common practice among ministers to tie back a portion of my income, and I do that to both churches, because uh, I believe in following by example. Can you think of any other secular employee voluntarily giving back a portion of their income to their employer? Voluntarily? And yes, I was correct, the teachers do this quite often, the ministers as well. For many in our Western individualistic society, God is not a part of the equation. It's only about the individual's independence and freedom to do whatever they want with what they have earned. Christianity is not centered around the individual. Rather, it is centered around a community. In our scripture text for this morning, we get a picture of the early church and how they used their resources. The text says, no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but have held everything that they owned in common. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold to the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as they had need. When the earliest followers of Jesus shared what they had within the community of faith, they were making the kingdom of God a reality. They were enacting the values that Jesus held to be central to the faith, which was caring for the less fortunate. Jesus says, whatever you've done to the least of these, you've done it to me. The presence of Christ is identified with the least of these. Both First Congregational and Mayflower have been active in doing ministry within their own communities, such as the Helping Hands program at Whiting that sets aside money for those in need to buy groceries and other essential items, the Orphan Brain Train, which provides gift boxes to children in need from, or from other countries during Christmas, and we work to provide community meals to the community center, center in Ottawa from Charlie's Diner, Mayflower provides free coats to those in need in our community with our free coat giveaway. We provide for those in need with our free food share with partnership that we have with the nonprofit Zestos. We have a furniture giveaway and a rubbish giveaway. And anything I've left out, I'm sorry, you can just tack on and tack on and on. All of these things would not be possible without a church. And the people who oversee it we are making God's kingdom a reality in this community in which we live. It's not just about charity, social services, and volunteerism. We do what we do as a church because we believe that all things belong to God and that none of us truly owns anything and that God has given us the greatest gift that we could ever have which is His Son, Jesus Christ. We are compelled as Christians to share the gifts with others and to be that embodiment of the presence
presence upon the earth. That is what it means when the Bible calls the church the body of Christ. That's you, and that's me. We do what we do because of Jesus and God alone. God has given us a gift. And so we are commanded to share that gift with others. That is what stewardship in the church is all about. When we do this then, we will find ourselves to be rooted in love. As we continue on this journey towards Commitment Sunday, let us not forget what stewardship is all about and how it is intricately intertwined as an important function of the church that says a lot about who we are as a church and what it is that we value. 